So um, please um, consider stopping for that. It's fun to see all the different salads lined up and have a, a fun choice of things maybe we don't eat very often. And, um, and then stay for Bible study and fellowship. Um, also, uh, at the end of the month, it's important to point out that we will not be worshiping here on August 25th. We will be worshiping outdoors, and we will be at the new um, pavilion, the new shelter that is in Morgan Creek off of E Avenue. So um, please uh, take note of that and prepare that that's where we'll be. Um, there'll be breakfast after that, and there'll also be a blessing of backpacks during the worship service. Morning to those who are joining us from the live stream. As always, it is good to have you with us. We appreciate that you are still part of our um, worshiping community of faith, and um, your prayers and your worship are uh, lifted up with ours as you And let's see, one or two more things. Please take note of the new day. I'm sure that our crafters would be glad to have anybody who is willing to help with that. Um, Wednesday, August 28th at 9 a.m. And you don't need to be um, particularly crafty, just able to follow some instructions and, and help that. So please come and uh, help prepare for the craft sale that um, Supports our youth community. And finally, um, just take a look. We're collecting different things for God's work our hands and also for the Lutheran World Relief um, school kits. So those items are listed as well. And then finally, um, on a, in the spirit of how we enter offered invitations to those who wanted um, the people to join them for graduation celebrations. Um, Tiffany, um, one of our congregation members, is expecting a baby, and there's going to be an event celebrating that after worship at 11.30 with her family and friends, and she wants the whole church to know that you are invited to stop in and ask for refreshments and
The first lesson is from the 19th chapter of 1 Kings. Elijah given bread for his journey. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 4 through 8. Elijah went on a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary green tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the green tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked with hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that room, forty days and forty nights, to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is from the fourth chapter of Ephesians. Put away evil. Live in love. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. So then, putting away falsehood, falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another tender hearted forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God this is the word of the Lord According to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And then the Jews began to complain about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus the son of Joseph? His father and mother we know. How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Be seated. Were you all watching the Olympics these past few weeks? Of course, right? Um, 
it's uh maybe it was just me and but maybe you noticed this too that a lot of the spotlights on the various athletes showed an aspect of how they um a lot of them had to learn how to take better care of themselves. Now, we would think that these elite athletes, right, that they are very well taken care of, you know, um, plenty of people helping to train them and watch over them and their, and their health. But it wasn't just physical health, it's their, their well-being. And we hear a phrase a lot called self-care. But I wonder if we really think about what that means. I think there can be a misunderstanding for that, that a lot of time people think, oh, you know, it's um, reading your favorite book or drinking coffee from Starbucks or, um, you know, getting uh, a pedicure, right, at the spa, something like that. And not that those things don't fill our buckets or fill our cups back up, but really, if you think about that, that's a pretty privileged idea of what self-care is. Um, and I have to say that that was not an original thought on my own, but something brought to my awareness back in seminary. I forget what it was that we were preaching on in preaching class, but as um, we talked about the scripture, one of my classmates said that having been in different stages of life, having had to struggle financially now that she was in seminary and she and her husband were trying to raise kids and, and all of that, as well as pay for the education. Um, she said that sometimes it seems like um, self-care is a luxury. And she said, I have trouble doing it, and I wonder how people who might have to work two jobs or have lots of kids to feed and make decisions that um, – you know, they don't eat so their kids can, or um, even our older adults who are getting by on fixed income and might have to decide between food or other basic needs and medical care or prescription. And so you think about self-care, and I looked up a definition because I think it's helpful to hear and to read different definitions. And this is the one that I like the best. It's to take action to ensure holistic well-being, to promote one's health, to manage illness when one is sick, and then for daily acts of self-care, such as our food choices, exercise, sleep, and hygiene. So, back in the day, and I don't know if they still teach this, but I think it still applies. Um, in psychology, we learned about um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Where if you don't have your basic needs met, it's hard to start looking at the, the broader needs, the, the bigger, more um, abstract needs, not as physical and tangible as food and water and shelter and clothing. And so when you're preoccupied with that, there isn't a lot of time to um, think about other types of health, such as our mental health or our spiritual health. And so it's got me thinking, and I, I look at Elijah's story, and I see his weariness. I hear how he is tired. This dear prophet, despite his recent victory over the false idol Baal, you might remember that story, he's having a tough time. And Queen Jezebel now has a bounty out on his head. And he's wondering what all of this is for, this work that God has called him to do. He feels like he is the last prophet on earth, and the burden is too much. He's weary. He's beyond weary, really. He's done. He wants to die. 
So he finds a comforting, shady oasis under a broom tree, and he escapes into sleep. As God sees and hears Elijah, God sees and hears Elijah, and God sends an angel to watch over him in his exhaustion. And the angel rouses Elijah from his sleep and says, get up and eat. And Elijah looks around and there's bread and water for him. He eats and he drinks and he goes back to sleep. And then once again, after a time, the angel returns with the same reminder, get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. Eating drinking, and resting. They're signs of life, signs of meeting our own basic needs. At the end of his rope, at the end of his hope, Elijah had to stop. He had to stop and be renewed. The news lately has uh, been filled with reminders that um, COVID is spreading, not in the um, pandemic ways that it did um, back in the day in the lovely um, years of 20 and 21, but it's still there. And it brings back memories and reminders of that time. And also then we find ourselves today, a day after the anniversary of the derecho and we write remember what things were like back then and how some things still are different now and it can make us weary it can make us tired it can make us more than just physically tired but just sort of done but we're told that Elijah, with this new strength that he received from the bread and the water and rest, he was able to travel for 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb. God heard Elijah. And God gave him strength for the journey. Strength for the journey can come to us, as I said, on more than one level, right? The real food the real water, the real rest, we need that. We need it. The elite athletes need it. We need it. Elijah needs it. All of us need it. And in our times of being overwhelmed, times when we are undergoing a lot of stress, it might be personal stress, stressors in our lives, it might be things where we're wondering how something is going to turn out. And we don't feel like we have any control over it. And there are a lot of things out there in the world that put stress on us. Things we hear in the headlines that make us worry about the state of this world in which we live, in which we are leaving to our children and grandchildren. But also the personal stresses of work, of different obligations, of of caring for older parents and caring for younger kids and all the different things that pull us in different directions. The rising cost of groceries. Well, in our times of being overwhelmed, we forget the basics. We forget the basics and we push them aside. But that is really when we need them the most. That is when we need someone to touch us on the shoulder to say, take a break, grab some lunch, regroup. But then on the other level, we hunger for more than just the basics. We hunger for resilience, resilience that's fueled by hope and a promise that we matter. We matter to God. And that our work and our service mean something, that our lives make a difference in the world. Getting buried in struggles, we often dig in deeper. 
We long for an escape, just like Elijah longed for an escape. But God didn't provide an escape. God provided life. It's a resurrection story, really. Get up, eat, drink, journey on, journey through. God is present. God sends help. And this is what sticks out to me immediately as we look at this next slice of the bread of life today in the gospel. Jesus says, no one can come to me unless they're drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. Like the yeast making the dough to rise, the bread of life, Jesus promises that those that are drawn to him through the Father will be raised up. Resurrection. Get up. Get up. Eat the bread. Journey on. Journey through. The, the crowds, the folks that have been following Jesus, they've been, in a sense, huddled under their broom tree, feeling the oppression of Rome, experiencing poverty and illness, wanting an escape. And here was Jesus. Jesus tapping them off on the shoulder, ta- tapping them on the shoulder, waking them up and offering some bread to eat. First, it was actual bread, bread and fish, really. You remember on that day when he fed everyone with the boys' lunch. Those were the basics, the daily bread. And they were willing to eat it. They were anxious to eat it. They were hungering for it, so much so that then we hear they followed him looking for more. But Jesus was there to offer more, and not only more of the same, but more as in something beyond a fish sandwich. And as they listen, then they begin to pick up on that, begin to pick up on the fact that there's something more to this Jesus than a free lunch. Bread of life, bread that saves, bread that brings eternal life, bread from heaven. Yes, Jesus, give us this bread always. But then all of a sudden, his tone changes, and the tone of the crowd changes. Did the crowd starts to hear the underlying message in his words that this something more Jesus says he is offering is himself. When it sinks in that he's serious about what he's saying, that he, he is the bread of life, the bread from heaven, they begin to complain. I mean, it sounded so special, so meaningful, this life-giving bread that would mean the end of their hunger. Until he said it was him. It's time for a reality check. I mean, this is Jesus, the son of Joseph. They know him. They know his parents. He's not from heaven. He's from down the block. The signs and the mysterious promises of God are all well and good. But this guy is still just Jesus from Nazareth. Jesus, you make a good prophet. You're a good rabbi, an interesting teacher, an amazing healer. You put together a tasty fish sandwich. But let's draw the line somewhere. You, you as the I am, you the bread that comes down from heaven, you sent by the Father, your flesh is the bread that you offer up for the life of the whole world. And I wonder, I wonder if we were to have been there with Elijah when the angel woke him and told him to eat. Would we have wondered what he was really thinking? Did he want that bread and water? Did he really believe it was going to help or make a difference, given all the trouble that Elijah was in? Fearing for his life and at the same time in so much despair, calling on God that his life might end. Bread and water, that was the answer God offered to his problems. And perhaps not believing it would help at all, Elijah still ate and drank. And that bread and that water, it carried him 40 days and nights to Mount Horeb. It gave him strength for the journey. It got him up. It raised him up. It resurrected him. So back to the crowd and Jesus. Jesus, that guy who's just from down the block, the son of Joseph. 
The sky is who they're supposed to believe is God's answer to their problems. He says he's the bread of life from heaven, sent from God as their food for the journey, to raise them up to eternal life, resurrection. It's all a little hard to swallow. They find themselves choking on this something more. They're coughing, coughing, they're spluttering, they're complaining. The 40-day journey wasn't the end of Elijah's story. There's way more to Elijah's story after he reaches Mount Horeb. And there is more yet to Jesus' story here, too. More than these crowds can know or believe in that moment. More like, he will raise Lazarus up. More about what it means that Jesus, the bread, gives us his flesh dying on a cross. More that he will be raised up himself on the third day. Resurrection, something more than death. And it's bread for the journey. Real bread, food, nutrition, but then something more. And so we come to worship here. And we see a plate of bread, or today a plate of wafers, um, sitting on the altar plate of wafers and a cup of wine and you'll be invited to get up and to eat and maybe from under our own personal broom trees we think really lord with all that's going on in the world with all that we're facing in our personal lives with all we see others struggling with with all that we don't want to face or believe we can't face this is the answer this is what you offer. This is what's supposed to feed me and heal me and cleanse me and save me. And Jesus said, the bread is from heaven. It's me, my flesh, my blood, my life for you and for the whole world. And maybe we feel like it's hard to swallow. That bread isn't from heaven or those, those wafers aren't from heaven. Or from the religious supply company. And if it was bread, it would probably be from hy V down the block. But what is this really? What is it? Well, thanks be to God, we don't come to Jesus by what we know that this bread and wine is. Thanks be to God that we don't come to eternal life by the things that we know or understand, but we come by grace through faith. We're drawn in by the Father, we're tapped by the Holy Spirit on the shoulder, and we're reminded to eat and to drink. Elijah knew Queen Jezebel. He knew about the death of so many prophets before him by her command. He wanted to die under that broom tree based on the things that he knew. God sent an angel to say, get up and eat. There is more. This crowd knew Jesus. They knew him from a few miracles, a few inspiring teachings, and they knew he was Joseph's son. But later on, many in that crowd will shout, crucify him, and his own disciples will flee and deny and betray him. But God sent an angel an angel that rolls away a stone and to tell the disciples that the bread of life has risen. There is more. Not more of the same, no, but something new, something to hope in, something that matters for you and for me and for the whole world. Life, eternal life, abundant life. So despite what we think we know about the wafer, or the wine that we sip, by grace through faith, we still eat and drink. And in eating, then we are given strength for the journey. And then despite what we know about the world, about ourselves, we will get up and go out, fed by the bread of life, and then sent to be the bread of life for others. Sent from God, 
We're just you and me from down the block, us. But we're also the body and the flesh of Christ, offering daily bread and something more, the bread of life, the bread of heaven, and the Son of God, Jesus. Amen.
in your name.